Good morning, welcome to Breakfast with Naga Manchetti and Charlie State. Our headlines today. Joe Biden edges closer to the White House and says he's got the votes to win the US election. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. With the results on a knife edge, President Trump starts legal action in key states, calling for the counting to be stopped. There's a warning of stiff fines for rule breakers as a four-week lockdown comes into force in England. Good morning. A bruising knife for Manchester United in the Champions League. Poor defending costs them as they lose in Istanbul to increase the pressure on their manager. Wouldn't be a lockdown without Captain Tom. He's back with a new walking campaign to help the lonely. Good morning. There's some mist and fog to watch out for this morning, particularly in southern areas. Quite a bit of cloud, but there will be some brightness. And I'll put that all together in about 10 minutes. Good morning. It is Thursday, the 5th of November. Our top story is the result of the US election remains in the balance as votes continue to be counted in key battleground states. Joe Biden is inching closer to victory after claiming Michigan overnight, with the report suggesting he will take more key states today. But the Trump campaign is taking legal action in several areas, calling for counts to be stopped, as our North America correspondent Ben Wright reports. There are still millions of votes to count, and this presidential race is not decided. Looking to see... In Georgia, Donald Trump kept the narrowest of leads over Joe Biden as ballots were tallied late into the night. It was a scene repeated in the handful of states that will now decide this election. At the moment, it's Joe Biden sounding confident. He currently has more electoral college votes than his rival and chalked up vital wins in the Midwest. Michigan, a Democratic gain, and Wisconsin looks to have gone the same way. Here, the people rule. Power can't be taken or asserted. It flows from the people. And it's their will that determines who will be the president of the United States and their will alone. In Nevada, the two candidates are neck and neck, and the state will release more results on Thursday. And in Arizona, once a Republican stronghold, Joe Biden stayed slightly ahead while election officials counted the remaining postal ballots. After President Trump prematurely declared victory and erroneously claimed in a tweet to have won states he hadn't, Republicans filed a string of lawsuits and complaints. We're going to win Pennsylvania, but they're trying to cheat us out of it because they know it's their only path to victory. They know it's the only path to victory. And so we came here today, we met with all our lawyers. Uh, we are going to file suit in Pennsylvania. After an attempt by the Trump campaign to stop the count in Michigan, the state's chief election officer called the lawsuit meritless. We're focused on getting this right in a way that can withstand any court challenges. Uh, I'll also mention, and we've seen this not just in Michigan, but in other states, a lot of times court challenges or allegations are thrown around to further political agendas as opposed to actual legal claims. We could still be waiting a while to discover who the next president will be as an unprecedented volume of postal votes are counted. But it's the current occupant of the White House who is trying to catch up. We can talk to Ben now, who's in Washington. Ben, morning to you or evening to you. Um, so these votes still being counted. Any idea of when we might know? Uh, morning, Naga. Well, it depends uh, what state we're looking at. For instance, Pennsylvania, a massive part of the jigsaw that is left in terms of Donald Trump and Joe Biden wanting to piece their path to victory. The, uh, Pennsylvania has said they might, might not have a final count by Friday uh, because they allow quite a long time for the, I think it's three days, for votes to come in uh, after Election Day, so long as they were stamped on Election Day itself. So there's quite a lag in Pennsylvania. Whereas you look at a state like Georgia, which is busy counting right now, and Arizona, you could get a result from there or a declaration made even within hours. And that could suddenly shift the whole dynamics of this race, uh, change the Electoral College maths and give uh, either Joe Biden or Donald Trump uh, a sense of whether they're going to win this thing or not. So we don't know. It could be hours. It could be a number of days. But what's clear is that it's the Republicans, it's Donald Trump, who feel on the back foot and they're trying to sort of throw sand into the wheels of these counts by bringing forward these lawsuits, making groundless claims uh, of fraud, trying to cause delay and I think so some distrust among American people about the whole process. Mm. OK, Ben, thanks very much. Ben there for us in Washington.
We're going to talk to a former right-hand man of President Trump, Anthony Scaramucci now. He served as his director of communications. We'll talk to him in about 10 minutes. A new four-week lockdown has begun in England, with people told to stay at home and non-essential shops, pubs and gyms ordered to close. There are strict new rules on mixing with other households too, and the police are warning that there will be tough action taken against anyone who breaks the rules. Anna O'Neill has more. It's lights out for Blackpool. No more visitors to the famous illuminations for now. The seaside town was already under England's highest tier of restrictions, but now the plug has been pulled on virtually all entertainment. Over in Hull last night, people made the most of their last evening of relative freedom. Might be the last chance until Christmas. We're coming out because we've had our anniversary, so it's just yeah. it's a reason to come out. Celebrate our anniversary. To be fair, if otherwise we probably wouldn't have bothered. And there was also a celebratory atmosphere in London's Soho. It kind of feels a little bit like New Year's Eve. It's got that kind of New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve atmosphere in the air. It's a bit sad that maybe yeah. it's at 10. You know, it's a bit hard because it's like, how much to celebrate? My birthday's coming up, like, is it cancelled? Yeah. We don't know, do you know what I mean? Police could be seen surrounded by crowds as they encouraged people to go home and stay indoors for their own safety. The chair of the National Police Chiefs Council warned there would be stiff fines for those breaching the new coronavirus regulations coming into effect today. Our officers and others will be out there and if people are not abiding by the rules then we'll engage, we'll explain, we will encourage but if we have to we'll enforce. So what are the new regulations? Pubs and restaurants are now closed but takeaways can stay open. Non-essential shops and entertainment venues are also closed. People can't mix with other households in homes or gardens, but meeting one person from another household in a public space is allowed. And you should stay at home unless you're going to work, education, essential shopping, exercise or medical reasons. I'll put the, speaking valve on. the latest UK figures recorded a further 492 coronavirus deaths yesterday, the highest daily figure since May, and 25,177 confirmed cases. It's hoped these new measures, which will stay in place for at least four weeks, will help to bring the deaths, cases and pressure on the NHS down. Anna O'Neill, BBC News. Well, let's get the latest now from our political correspondent, Jessica Parker. Morning to you, Jess. So we're hearing reports that the Chancellor is going to be make, making an announcement related to the furlough scheme. What do you know about that? Yeah, Rishi Sunak up in the Commons uh, later today. We're expecting a sort of update because he actually hasn't addressed the Commons since they announced over the weekend that the furlough scheme would now be extended over the month-long English uh, lockdown. I think it would be surprising if he announced anything new for that lockdown because it is now already underway. But questions looming over the future, namely... As we've been talking about already this week, if Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland decide they need to go into a further lockdown in the future beyond early December, will workers there get the full 80% furlough? Boris Johnson has this week suggested that they would, but there have been no details forthcoming, leading to some suspicion that maybe uh, the Treasury was caught off guard and has been trying to work out uh, the details since then. And remember, it would mean that the Treasury here in Westminster would be guaranteeing quite a lot of cash for future lockdowns that it would have no say over introducing. But of course, there was anger when this furlough scheme was extended at the last minute ahead of the lockdown in England. And I think if the government doesn't make some sort of future guarantee for other parts of the UK, it could face accusations that it prizes English jobs over, say, for example, Scottish ones. Jessica, thanks very much. Five fans have made it to the final weekend of the competition Woo! in an unmissable two-night special. Is everyone ready to bring it? They battle it out for the chance of a lifetime. You make me so excited. Who will make it all the way? This opportunity can literally change your life. I hate this bit. And be crowned the winner. I'm going to have to push you for a decision. This is horrible. Little Mix The Surge on BBC One and iPlayer. Should we take a look at the today's papers? Um, most leading with the US election. The Daily Mail's headline is Donald Trumped. The paper says that after a knife-edge election, Joe Biden claimed that victory is in his sight. 
America holds its breath. That's the headline in The Times. It runs a picture of Donald Trump, who has accused Joe Biden of stealing votes. Make America wait again is the Metro's headline. The paper says Mr. Biden was inching closer to a win last night, whilst a seemingly desperate, its words, president threatened legal action. It points out that even without all votes counted, Mr. Biden had won more votes than any candidate in history, surpassing Barack Obama in 2008. And finally, from America, the Washington Post has a map with the breakdown of the results so far. We're joined now by former member of President Trump's inner circle, Anthony Scaramucci, who was also the White House Director of Communications in 2017, who joins us now from New York. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, how surprised or how unsurprised are you that we are where we are at this moment in time? Well, I think, you know, people wanted the results at 10.59 Eastern Standard Time on election eve, and so election night, so obviously... We didn't get that, but I think we are sort of where we would be given the fact that we've had the drama of COVID-19. And so we just have to wait for the absentee ballots to be tabulated. They're being tabulated legally and ethically, and there's no voter fraud. Uh, there's been never any proof of voter fraud. And so it's interesting, uh, Mr. Uh, the President Trump has some protesters saying stop the vote in certain states. He has protesters saying start the vote in other states, sort of, you know, count the vote in other states, sort of ridiculous. So uh, it's going to end. Uh, the 46th president of the United States will be Joe Biden. He had an incredible night. If you really step back and look at the whole thing, uh, the largest vote total in history, he flipped four to five states and beat an incumbent. And we've only had three incumbents lose since World War II. And he brought with him the first female African-American uh, vice president. So all in all, it was a very good showing for the vice president. As you may know, they've, uh, they've cut the airspace, the FAA, over Delaware. It's all signs are indicating that he's going to be the president-elect very shortly. It'll probably be sometime tomorrow afternoon. So, the, the, sorry, the significance of that airspace being cut is preparing for an announcement. Yes, exactly right. Yeah, that's usually a sign. The uh, the, the Secret Service has noti notified the FAA that uh, this is coming to an end shortly. And so that was done a few hours ago. OK. Um, you were um, communications director for President Trump for 11 days. Um, are you surprised? So you did have some insight into him and how he works and how the teams around him work. Are you surprised um, by how he is reacting to the lack of results and, you know, calling for certain ballots to be recounted and threatening um, legal action? You know, I'm never really surprised about the way he's acting, but I am surprised. I continue to be surprised by uh, the Republican Party, people like Mitch McConnell and uh, uh, Leader McCarthy. These guys I'm surprised by because they know better. And I know the president was told because I'm still close to White House staff and people inside the campaign. He was told not to give that speech on election night about or election morning, the morning after. He was told not to give that speech. He gave it anyway. Uh, it was a disastrous speech. Even uh, Gen uh, Governor Christie, a very good personal friend of mine, renounced that as well. He's good friends with President Trump. So listen, this is what you get from President Trump. This is the reason why good people that have worked for him, whether it's General Mattis, General Kelly, uh, Secretary Tillerson, myself, uh, we felt it was our duty to speak out to the American people and to the world to let them know what is actually really going on so that we could remove him and return the country to some level of normalcy. So let's assume <clears throat> if the, the, the way the results are looking that Joe Biden is going to be announced as the next president of the United States between now and January the 20th, um, how do you think President Trump and the Republican camp will handle the transition. So I, I again, I'm going to maintain my prediction on this because this is in the best interest of President Trump that it is handled peacefully and he's cooperative because I think he has a whole host of problems in New York. He's got investigatory problems in the city of New York and the state. He may have some federal issues related to the Trump organization and his family. And I know he really only thinks about himself. When he's doing a news search, he searches T-R-U-M-P. He doesn't search USA, and he definitely doesn't search Y-O-U. And so he's sitting there saying, OK, how do I get myself out of this situation, avoid jail time for myself and my family members? 
And the Venn diagram indicates there's only one way to do that, and that's to be co cooperative. That's not to say that he may not start a political movement once he can clear the fence on these investigations. He may do that, uh, but I predict he'll never run again for president. All of that nonsense that's being spewed today about him being a presidential candidate in 2024, I don't believe. Has he got that will to bounce back like that? Would he have the support in the Republican Party? Well, he definitely has the will to bounce back. He's bounced back three or four times. He's a very tough person. Uh, there's traits about him I do admire. I don't like demonizing anybody, particularly him. Uh, but uh, no, I don't see that. But what I do see, which does worry me as a longtime Republican, is that the president, to his credit, got about 70-ish million votes. It could be higher than that once all these states are tabulated. And I think that will embolden the cause of Trumpism which is sort of a deformity of the old Republican Party. And I'm just worried about the acolytes of Mr. Trump championing that side of that type of demagoguery, if you will. Uh, so that could be a party problem uh, for the next four to eight years. We'll have to see what happens. But uh, young people <clears throat> in that party that are hanging tough with Mr. Trump, they could be more Trumpy than him in four or eight years. Um, Joe Biden made very clear that if um, he is declared as um, the next president of the United States, that he is not going to represent blue or red states, he's going to represent all states. How concerned are you about um, the cohesiveness and especially considering the, the divisions that this election has caused about the atmosphere and the reaction to this election result across the United States? So I do think it's leadership. And I think if he does make that transformation and, and we move from this sort of partisan rancor to something that is post-partisan, and I think the vice president is well positioned to do that. He's a lifelong centrist. He's 78 or 77, about to be 78 when he becomes president, the oldest person to ascend to the presidency. I'm hoping he'll have that transcending, transformative moment uh, where he'll try to knit the country back together. And there's some things he could do like an education reform bill, an infrastructure bill. These are things that you could find common cause with the Republican Party. And I'm hoping that incrementalism will benefit the country and cooler heads will prevail. I also believe if you just stop the nonsensical tweeting and the bellicosity of rhetoric on Twitter and the bullying of private citizens by the president of the United States on Twitter, I think that will reduce a lot of the tension and a lot of the anxiety here in the United States and perhaps even around the world. Anthony Scaramucci, former White House Director of Communications, thank you for your time with us this morning. Right now, let's speak to Julia Manchester, who's a political reporter for The Hill in Washington, D.C., for us this morning. Julia, very good morning to you, sir. We're uh, just coming up to, what, 6.20 in uh, the U.K. People are waking up thinking, where are we at with the U.S. election? What am I waking up to this morning? What are the key indicators uh, uh, to look forward to next? Well, Joe Biden definitely has a significant lead, and I've heard some people describe him as practically knocking on the White House door right now. He won Wish Michigan and Wisconsin yesterday, two major wins for him, and we're now waiting on vote totals out of Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Arizona. Now, the Trump campaign has filed lawsuits in Michigan and Georgia, um, in Pennsylvania, hoping to maybe stop the vote count or delay it somehow. However, we'll really have to see how that plays out, because while they're doing that in the eastern part of the United States, in states like Nevada and Arizona, they're working to uh, elongate the vote process as much as they can. So talk us through those. Uh, you've mentioned Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania, and a lot of people will have picked up, even if you haven't followed it that closely, the thought that Pennsylvania may be the, fi you know, the final curtain in, in the, the whole process. But talk us through those three states. Well, in Pennsylvania, the issue is that there were so many mail-in ballots, and they didn't start counting those mail-in ballots until recently, um, you know, on election day. So they had this influx of mail-in ballots, and that's a bit of a um, that's going to create a bit of, de of a delay. So we see that President Trump, from what we last saw, had a bit of a slight lead over Joe Biden. But in Arizona and Nevada, we see that Joe Biden has more of a significant lead in that state, which might in those states, which might. Expect 
explain why President Trump is trying to uh, put lawsuits on the states on the East Coast, like Pennsylvania, um, you know, where uh, he is behind, he is he appears to be that lead appears to be narrowing, but wanting to count more votes in Arizona and Nevada so we can get more votes there to close the gap with Joe Biden. Julia, it had been widely predicted that Donald Trump would uh, recourse to law uh, in this situation, and so it's proven that's already begun that process. Can you just talk us through precisely what it is he's challenging? Well, he's challenging a lot of these mail-in ballots, specifically when they were postmarked and when they were received by a lot of these polling places. And in principle, where does that process go? Well, we will have to see. I think we'll start with state and local courts, and then it could potentially go, if successful, and challenge to a higher Supreme Court. Uh, Julia, thank you very much for your time this morning. That's Julia Manchester, who's uh, speaking to us from Washington, D.C. See the headlines as they happen and watch BBC News live in the app and get the full story with bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Follow the story for all the latest with BBC News. You are watching Central Wisdom Hub Television. Central Wisdom Hub. Desire. Idea. Purpose and plan.